Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. Today we're going to be looking at Azure Container Instances. Today we're looking at Azure Container Instances on Azure. Now fundamentally, Azure Container Instances gives one the ability to create containers on Azure without having to spin up some kind of middleware to run those containers. By middleware, I'm talking about some kind of explicitly defined middleware that is designed to run containers like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or just a VM running Docker or something like Azure App Services. Now, typically with containers, you have to first deploy that kind of infrastructure and then you can run containers. With Azure Container Instances, though, what you can do is create the containers directly on Azure without that need for that container runtime. So these are basically first-class citizens in the Azure context. And this makes deploying containers on Azure very easy to do. And because of this, you can run some rather robust applications on Azure, but you will also need to be able to integrate it with other Azure services. So you can do things like integrate it with Azure File Storage or Azure VNets. So you can combine multiple container instances to run your application, use Azure File Storage for data persistence, or you can have something like virtual machines running right alongside of Azure Container Instances as well. So this gives you lots of options for integrating Azure Container Instances into more broad solutions on Azure. Now in our first video when we started talking about it, Docker, we deployed an Azure Container Instance as a demo, and we deployed just a single container and it connected it to a public IP address on a single port. And that primary container is an example of Azure Container Instance in its most basic form. However, Azure Container Instances is much more robust than a single container. A single container can be used alongside a sidecar container in something called a container group. Now, a container group is basically the analog to a pod in the Kubernetes context. So you basically can have a principal container running in that group and then use a sidecar container that might be a back-end container, it might be a logging or monitoring container or something along those lines. The container group though is what gives you the ability to put those containers together and deploy them as a single unit. And then you can expose that container group to a public IP address or you can do other things with that container group as well. So typically a container group will have you know, multiple containers with those uh, groups and you can have mul multiple different containers uh, running in that more than two in fact you can have up to I think uh, 60 run in a single container group and each one of them gets their own uh, vCPU allocation and their own RAM allocation depending on what you need. Now once you have that container group defined you can also have a, another container group right alongside it. Now there is nothing in Azure that allows you to deploy these as a unit per se. So you would have to deploy a container instance with a container group and then a second container instance with a second container group and each one of those have their own uh, respective containers in them. But this would allow you to have an application that might have the front end, say a website running in container group one and a back end running in container group two. And then when you have this, you can do integrations with a lot of other different services. So as we mentioned, Azure VNets would be one way that you could link these two together. So I could create an Azure VNet, have my application running in container group one, that's and then expose that to the public internet, and then put a database in container group two, and then exp and not expose that to the internet, but attach those to VNets, and then have that VNet uh, be the media by which the application in container group one talks to a database in container group two. And with that, you can also do things like attach file storage to the container group as well and provide a way to persist data outside the container, which in container worlds, that is a good practice to do because containers are really ephemeral units. They don't have a permanent storage. So once the container gets deleted, anything that's actually stored in the container gets deleted is with, with that container unless you store the data outside the container 
on something like Azure File Storage and mount that Azure File Storage as a mount point in the container itself. So this ability to integrate with something like Azure File Storage is a way to get that data persistence in container instances. You can also use something like Key Vault if you want to have secrets involved in your containers. So this would be things like SSL certificates, passwords, connection strings, and so on. With container instances, you can take a secret, put it in Key Vault, mount that into the container, and then use that data inside the container maybe to connect to the database through a, a connection string or connect to something else on Azure with a password. I do want to mention some of the limitations of Azure Container Instances, and some of these will be differentiators between using something like Azure App Services and Kubernetes. Now, one of the major limitations of Azure Container Instances is the fact that it has no scaling options. Once you have a container instance up and running, it's not uh, possible within the container instance to add additional containers to that to scale it up or scale it down by removing those. There are things like automatic resource and other things like that, uh, that will give you some kind of health monitoring. But as far as monitoring the load that's coming into a container environment, uh, and then adding additional compute resources to uh, meet the demands of additional load isn't available in container instances. So if you need that kind of scaling, you can go with something like Azure App Services or stand up Azure Kubernetes services, which we'll do videos on later down the road. A second limitation is the fact that other network integrations such as load balancers and application gateways have to con be configured separately. Now with Azure App Services, uh, you don't get these automatically, but they have their own concepts of load balancers and application gateways baked into the App Service platform. So you don't have to actually configure a load balancer uh, to load balance across m an app service. It automatically does that for you. In the same way with Kubernetes, um, once you have an Azure Kubernetes instance up and running, what you can do with that is deploy load balancers to Kubernetes and Azure con Kubernetes services will create the corresponding infrastructure in Azure for you automatically without you having to manually do that yourself. Similarly with app gateways, uh, once uh, you have an integration set up with something like Azure Kubernetes services, you can stand up routes inside of Kubernetes that are URL based routing and then direct traffic to specific pods in the back end or specific services in the back end of your application and Azure Kubernetes services will configure an application gateway in front of your Kubernetes instance with some of those same kind of rules. So these tight integrations that some of these other services have that can run containers with other Azure services is one of the compelling selling options that would make a uh, using something like Kubernetes or app services over using something like container instances. I'm here in the Azure portal and I've created a storage account inside of a resource group that I'm going to be using for my demo in this video. The storage account is called ACI Demo 1 and I wanted to use this storage account here and define the resources already, but I wanted to show you what I actually created. So I created a couple of file shares I'm going to be using in the containers for running a WordPress instance inside of Azure Container Instances. And I have two file shares defined. One is called WP Content and one is MySQL. So this is where the data for MySQL will go. And this is the folder where the content for WordPress will go. So all the data is persisted on Azure File Storage rather than inside the container, which is a good practice to have when you are talking about containers. So I've defined these file shares and I already have the access key. So now I need to connect this storage account to an Azure Container instance. And to do that, I have a special file format that is based on YAML that will allow me to do that. And so this file format is defined by Microsoft for creating Azure Container instances. So in this one, I'm gonna be using two different containers. You can see here that I have the name of it set, and that's what's gonna show up in the Azure portal right there. And then uh, inside of the properties, I'm going to have two containers that are defined here. This first container is the stock WordPress container. It's based on PHP 7.2 and is running Apache inside the container. And it's gonna expose port 80. And I'm gonna be mounting a volume 
at this mount point, so var www.html, from my storage account, which I had to find down below, which you'll see in just a second. Now, the second container is the one that's going to be running my SQL. This is a custom MySQL image that basically uh, I built on the base image that runs MySQL in order to work around some of the shortcomings that I think exists inside of the volume mounts. So whenever you mount volumes inside of an ACI instance from file shares, it, you don't you can't really change the permissions of that. So you have to be able to have the process that is running run as the same user as these are mounted at in order for the process to be able to read, write, and execute inside of whatever that mount point might be, which in this case required me to uh, configure my SQL to run as whatever the user is here that is mounted for this particular mount point and so that it could write data to this mount point. So once I built that image and put it up on Docker Hub, I can then access it at this image, uh, which is in my personal uh, Docker Hub repository there. But otherwise, it's the exact same image that my SQL is based on in from Docker Hub. And once I have that up and running, both of these will form a full WordPress stack. So one of them is running WordPress, one of them is running a database. Now down here is where I define some of the properties that are associated with the Azure Container Instance but aren't container specific. And here's the IP address. I'm declaring I want a public IP address running on port 80. Since this is not SSL, it's just a demo, that is fine. And here's where I've connected to that storage account that we've already seen. I have the storage account defined right here and both of my uh, volumes that I have here, and that's the same storage key. So it's using the same storage account, same key, but different share names. So my WP content and then my SQL, and those are mounted into their respective containers up above. So that's the YAML file that I had defined. So once I have this file defined and I have my containers up on a container registry and I have everything ready to go, I can simply just run a command line to deploy this and that's what I'm going to do next. I'm now here inside of the Windows terminal inside of my directory and I'm going to use the Azure CLI to create this. So Azure CLI has a subgroup called AZ container and this will allow me to create containers. So you can see here if I go AZ container create. I will get the parameters for creating this. And so I have a lot of options I can put into this. Um, and some of these are in preview still. So I haven't, uh, I'm not going to be using VNets. I wish I could, but I ran into some issues when I was uh, trying to work with those on another uh, instance of Azure Container Instances. So uh, later on, I will um, probably be building a video once that goes GA for VNet integration with Container Instances. But in any case, I want to create just a container instance based on my file that I have already. So I needed to find the resource group and I'm going to do that by just simply in, plugging in the name and um, I called it ACI demo one and then I do a dash dash file and I did I specified the file that I'm going to be using. So it's that WP uh, YAML file that we looked at just a second ago. So once I have this command built, I can then just run this and it will take a few seconds to run. So we'll come back whenever this finishes. Now I'm back here in the Azure portal and you can see that my container instances is created that finished down here and it gave me some output. So I knew that things were up and running and it successfully created that. So back in the Azure portal, I can go into my container instances and I can see that it's up and running at this point. Now to give you a brief tour of some of the features here, uh, if I wanted to come down here to containers, this is going to show me all the containers and the state that they're running in, in the current setup here on Azure container instances. So I have, ACI WordPress for my WordPress container and my SQL that is running. Both of them are up and running without any restarts here. You can come down here and you can see where things are as far as the status of these uh, particular containers, uh, either for your WordPress container or my MySQL container. If you have multiple containers, you would might see uh, more of those show up here. And you can click through the events. You can see it was pulled, it was pulled, it was started, it was created, everything is working. Uh, I could also look at some of the properties it sets so I can see the ports, the image name, the core count memory, and so on. And I can also uh, look at the same thing for this particular container as well. Then one cool feature you can do right here in the portal is actually see the, the logs 
for a given container. And this is the logs for my WordPress container. And this is the logs for my my SQL container. And it's just showing me the output from when basically when it created all the databases and uh, was up and running. Now, one of the coolest features you can do with Azure Portal, and you can also do this from the CLI as well, is shell into these. So I'm gonna zoom out here just a little bit so I can get a full experience here. And I'm gonna shell into my MySQL container and run a few commands against this container to create a user for MySQL uh, to use for WordPress. So I actually have all those those pre-configured here. So I'm just gonna basically copy and paste those into this uh, instance. But first I need to log into MySQL before I actually go copy and pasting. So I can do dash root dash, uh, dash u for root, that's the user, and dash p is gonna prompt me for that and it's really secure as password one. And now I can run the commands against MySQL. So I'm basically creating a WordPress user uh, called WordPress, and that's it'll allow it to authenticate from any host. Um, this command is going to create a database for me to use called WordPress, and um, I'm going to paste that in, and that's going to create the database, and then I'm going to grant access to that database uh, for the WordPress user, and then I'm going to flush um, privileges. Okay, now that I got the flush privileges command to work, I can now log into this. I should be able to log into this with WordPress. So I'm gonna come back over here to my, my overview and I'm gonna copy this fully qualified domain name here, which is the domain name that was created from the DNS setting that I put into the configuration file for my YAML folder, uh, YAML file. And it's going to post pen the region and then the top level domain for Azure Container.io. So once I have that, I can copy that and I can go to HTTP, not HTTPS, because this is on port 80, not running with any certificates on Apache, and it's going to give me the WordPress installation wizard. And it's going to ask me for the domain, the database name, the username, and so on. So I chose WordPress for the username, uh, for the database name. WordPress WP is the uh, username, and this is what I created when I created the commands in the uh, Azure portal using the container blade to for my work, uh, my SQL container. One of the idiosyncrasies of this is that localhost does not resolve to. 127.0.0.1. So for this to work, you have to hard code the IP address for for the do database host. And if that, uh, you submit it, and then everything should be ready to go for the installation. So I can run the WordPress installation against the actual uh, database that is up and running. And then I can punch in some settings for Word, uh, WordPress, uh, Word pass, password one and I'm going to confirm a weak password sure use my email address and install WordPress now this will basically just go through and create all the tables inside the WordPress database and once that's done uh, it will then redirect me to the login screen for my instance of WordPress and then I can also browse to the site so I, I don't have to log in to, uh, to this but to show you that it's up and running uh, just go to the root and it would pull up my website now, which is just a basic WordPress website with nothing uh, on it. I haven't customized this or used any themes, just the default theme. So that demo will show you how you can use Azure Container Instances with resource groups and then use some of the features in the Azure portal to create something like WordPress running on Azure Container Instances. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.